Okay, so gene coli 7-6, and we're going to talk about inelastic collisions. So 7-6, inelastic collisions. So inelastic collisions, some of the kinetic energy is lost, okay, and that's usually lost either to thermal or potential energy. It may also be gained during explosions as there is an additional of chemical or nuclear energy that happens, all right? But this is when, again, kinetic energy is not conserved in a reaction as opposed to, as opposed to momentum always being conserved. So a completely inelastic collision is one where the objects stick together afterwards. So there's one final velocity, and this is what we got a ballistic pendulum here. The uh, the, the uh, bullet hits the uh, block, and then the block rises up, and then we use that to find different things. And we'll talk about um, a problem like that. Um, so the ballistic pendulum. The ballistic pendulum is a device used to measure the speed of a projectile, such as a bullet. Um, a, the projectile mass M is fired into a large block of mass big M, which is suspended like a pendulum. As a result of the collision, the pendulum and pro projectile together swing up to a maximum height, which is this. All right. So we want to determine the relationship between the initial horizontal speed of the projectile, so your V, and the max height H. Do it now. All right. So we're looking at the ballistic pendulum. Here's the... Uh the mass of the uh, big block, and it's, it's stationary, so its velocity is zero. Um, the small bullet has a mass of lowercase m, and it's one that velocity. So the momentum that I start with is little m v, and that's going to equal the momentum that I uh, that I end with, which is the combined masses times v prime, right? With momentum being conserved, so this. V prime, and I'm, I'm solving for, in this case, I'm solving for uh, V prime um, if I want to define it, but this is the equation that I get, okay? So here is the equation for this inelastic collision of a, with one object not moving, okay? And then part B is asking um, the relationship um, between the initial speed, so V, and the uh, height, H, okay? So let's look at um, energy. So energy is conserved. So what happens is I have this thing moving, and it's at ground level zero, and it's going to rise to this height where it's going to stop moving. So I have kinetic energy here, and at the very top, I have just potential energy. So essentially, I'm going to say, I'm going to say that I have one half plus m v prime squared, right, is equal to my, ma my mass, which is m plus m times g times h. Well, my m plus m's cancel, right? And I'm going to solve this in terms of v prime. So I'm going to divide both sides by 1 half or multiply both sides by 2, and I get v prime squared is equal to 2gh take the square root, so V prime is equal to the square root of 2 GH. I'll give that a chance to, uh, to percolate a little bit. And then I'll just take this and put it in here for V prime. So I have MV is equal to M plus M square root of 2 GH. And then if I just want to solve this in terms of uh, a V, I just dis di divide both sides by M. So my initial velocity in terms of how high it goes is going to be this. And this is a ballistic pendulum equation. So V is equal to combined masses times the square root of 2GH divided by the mass of our bullet. And we can use that then to find um, uh, the velocity of our bullet initially, which is an interesting way to do it. And this is all, the rest of the stuff is all pretty much measurable. Um, railroad cars, again, um, for, for a completely inelastic collision of the two railroad cars that we considered, calculate how much of the initial kinetic energy is transformed to thermal or other forms of energy. So here's what we got. We got, we got this one moving 24, this one at rest. They collide and they end up with the final velocity. The question is, how much kinetic energy is lost. Do it now. All right, so 
go back to the train problem from, from earlier um, that we did um, a couple weeks ago, a week ago, whatever it, I think it was. Um, and we're just looking to see how much energy is transferred to thermal or other forms of energy. So what we're saying is that in any elastic collision, um, kinetic energy is not conserved. We lose energy, but momentum is conserved. So all we want to do is look at the information provided, kinetic energy before equals kinetic energy after, plus some work. So essentially what we're saying is this kinetic energy is going to be equal to this kinetic energy plus some thermal energy that we're going to lose due to work. So we find the kinetic energy here, which this has none, so it's all this. So it's one half, 10,000 times 24 squared, right, one half mv squared, equal to this, which is one, the kinetic energy here, which is one half. Remember the masses are combined, so it's 20,000. And then we found the velocity to be 12 squared plus w. And then we just calculate a way to get to uh, this. So let me open up my calculator. And I see one half times 10,000 times 24 squared minus all of this, which is one half times 20,000 times 12. Four kilojoules, which is uh, quite a bit of energy lost, but we're talking about two really big objects. So that's all. That's how we can use kinetic energy combined with something that we did with momentum.